All right, guys. Supposedly, there's some news. Some news we've been waiting for. Let's take a look. Big Mythic Plus news. Let's find the article. Here it is. I'm nervous. Are you guys nervous? I'm nervous. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. <clears throat> okay. Dragonflight Dungeon Level Squish in Season 4. Harder Mythic Zero with no affixes or timer for same loot. Blizzard has announced a Dragonflight Dungeon level squish. This means that you will have harder Mythic Zeros with no affixes or timer for the same loot. So TLDR, normal dungeons are unchanged. Okay. Heroic dungeons will be changing to a difficulty of current Mythic Zero and will remain queuable, but will drop current Mythic Zero loot. Mythic dungeons will be changing to be a difficulty of current Mythic plus 10 but will drop current Mythic plus 10 loot without a timer or affixes. Mythic plus dungeons will scale loot up to new Mythic plus 10. So new Mythic plus 10 is essentially what a 20 is now, from what I understand. They've basically gotten rid of the heroic level difficulty, the old heroic level difficulty, and shifted it back. So Heroic is current Mythic Zero, and then our new Mythic Zero is what Mythic Plus 10 is now. So we'll be going from Mythic Zero to Mythic 10, and that'll be like the regular progression path. And then anything above that will be like us going above 20s. So let's read this again. Dragonflight Season 4 brings with it a variety of changes, uh, including new adjustments to dungeons, their progression, and rewards. In the player feedback loop, as part of ongoing development in Dragonflight, the development team identified three issues to address based on community feedback regarding the dungeon system as it is. Heroic dungeons are barely distinct from normal dungeons at maximum level, and that distinction mostly only matters during a few days after players first reach max level. True. True. Even like when Dragonflight initially launched that first week, you don't even really do normal dungeons. You do them leveling up, you do them once to get the quest done, and then as soon as you're max level, you do it maybe once or twice to get a few pieces of gear that you need to get the eye level to start queuing for heroics. Um, yeah, normal dungeons just... It, it was a weird sort of progression system. So now Mythic Zero Dungeons uh, rapidly, sorry, not now, previously, Mythic Zero Dungeons rapidly lose relevance a few weeks into the expansion, once the Mythic Plus season starts, with occasional exception for the weekly event quest. Also true. Also true. So during that first week, um, guilds or people will just do Mythic Zero to kind of farm some gear, but then after that, there's never a reason to go back into Mythic Zero, um, unless you're like, Maybe farming achievements or doing the weekly event quest where you can just blast through whatever it is, five uh, dungeons to get the quest done. The only true endgame dungeon mode, Mythic Plus, currently revolves around a timer. This means that other than new mega dungeons, there isn't really a place for endgame players who enjoy a more methodical dungeon pacing and gameplay. Given the combination of two underutilized difficulties and a gap in meeting player demand, we're restructuring dungeon difficulty and rewards in Season 4. So heroic difficulty and rewards will move up to, the, to roughly the current level of Mythic Zero. These dungeons will remain available to queue into via Group Finder, though the item level requirement to queue will go up accordingly. Mythic Zero difficulty and rewards will move up to roughly the current level of Mythic 10, Mythic 8 to 10. This is a bit hand wavy numerically. It's close to Myth Mythic 10, but not having a timer at all or a fixes really offsets that quite a bit. Okay. The existing Mythic Plus system will pick up where that leaves off, such that a Mythic 5 in Season 4 is roughly the equivalent in difficulty rewards and Mythic Plus rating uh, awarded to a Mythic 15 today. Here's a visualization of the change. Uh, light blue circles represent where new affixes appear, going from Mythic 2, uh, Mythic 2, 7, 14 in the current world to 2, 5, 10 in the new one. Okay, so let's blow this up. Let's take a, a better look at this. 
get these ads out of here. So this is how it is currently, the top line. So we have normal, heroic, mythic zero. Then we get in a fix at two. We get one at seven. And we get one at like 14, right? That's what it said. So now for season four and presumably the next expansion, we have normal, we have heroic, and then there's a bigger jump here going from heroic to mythic zero. And the progression path for the average player is going to be from zero to 10. So zero to 10 in this new season and in the new expansion is like us going from 10 to 20 now. It's just condensed. So instead of progressing from mythic plus one, mythic, mythic plus zero all the way to 20, we're essentially just going from zero to 10. And then anything above 10 is going to be like doing above a 20 now. So that makes perfect sense to me. I don't know if you guys are, uh, are grasping that or if it's making sense in your mind, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's read this. No timer like the present. Season four changes will apply to all eight of the Dragonflight dungeons as a part of these adjustments. We have a few goals in mind. Recalibrate. Recalibrate core difficulties to align with seasonal player experience and progression. Serve the community who enjoys dungeon content but feels that Mythic Plus content isn't for them due to the pressures of taking part. Create a better environment in Mythic Plus dungeons to prepare more players to take part in Mythic Plus. I think this is a good point to make because there's quite the jump currently going from um, like normal heroic then Mythic Zero, which is still kind of a joke. Then you jump right into Mythic Plus, and it's very um, jarring to people who have no experience in Mythic Plus, and they don't know how any of it works. They don't know the strats. They don't know the routes. They don't know any of the mechanics because they previously didn't have to pay attention to mechanics in the Mythic Zeros because we outscaled them with our gear, and everything just died. So I think this is a good um, way to ease people into the game system. One of the most notable changes players can look forward to is the removal of the timer for Mythic Keystone Dungeons for what are currently 0 and 10. Players can run through these dungeons at their own pace without the need to watch the clock while still honing their skills. Here's a look at the changes for each difficulty. So, normal. This difficulty is unchanged. So normal staying the same. So nor normal dungeons are like level up dungeons. These are what you play while you're leveling currently from 60 to 70. Heroic. The tuning and rewards of this difficulty are increasing to be equivalent to a baseline mythic, mythic zero dungeon in the current system. So the current system is what we have now. So whatever eye level is dropping from our current system from a mythic zero, that's what's going to be dropping from heroic. Mythic difficulty changes and mechanics will not be present in this difficulty. So sometimes mobs or bosses will have special mechanics that are only in Mythic Plus, um, and they won't be on Heroic. This remains a queuable experience. So you can access this through pressing um, I, bringing up this panel in game. You can access it, go to random Heroic, you can still get to it through there. So Mythic. The tuning and rewards of this difficulty are increasing to the equivalent of a plus 10 dungeon with affixes in the current system. There are no timers, affixes, or limitations on changing specializations or talents while in the dungeon. Uh, the goal is to create a mega dungeon-like difficulty for this experience. This difficulty should present a meaningful challenge and provide uh, commensurate rewards without pressures of the current Mythic Plus system. Mythic Zero is still on a weekly lockout under this model, right? So this is like just the regular standard Mythic and Mythic Zero. It's going to be dropping the equivalent of plus 10s now. There's no timer, no affixes, no limitations on changing specs, whatever. But it is a bit harder. It's essentially going to be like what a plus 10 is now in our current system, but with the Mythic Zero rule set applied to it. Now, Mythic Plus. 
Mythic Plus system will have rewards up to level 10. So we go from Mythic 0 up to plus 10. With plus 2 starting from what would regularly be a plus 11 in the current Mythic Plus system. A plus 5 should be as hard as a plus 15 is now. And plus 10 should be as hard as a plus 20 in the current Mythic Plus system. Fixes would slot in at plus 2, plus 5, and 10. So this is, this is interesting because now we're getting that final affix. The on death affix is happening at the maximum. So instead of it happening at um, whatever it was, plus 17 or whatever in the current system, it's happening at the very end now at plus 10. So that also allows players to kind of ease into um, how Mythic Plus works. It's a, this is interesting. This is going to be very, very cool. Plus 14. Yeah, it's plus 14 currently. So this is happening at the very end. We have Fortified and Tyrannical at plus 2. Entangling and Incorporal, just as an example, right? These could be whatever. But at, pl at plus 5, we start to get our first affix. And then at the very end, plus 10, we get our on-death affixes. Dungeon ratings should be equivalent to what they represent in the current system. This is something I was wondering. How does that reflect in the points that you get? Are we going to get smaller points? Is our, our total IO score, for example, going to be smaller? Looks to be not the case. It's going to be the same. There should be a smaller range of keystone levels to find groups for, and more meaningful progression between each level. That is an, also a very good point. I didn't think about that. Interesting. So instead of Group Finder being kind of flooded with um, keys from, you know, plus zero all the way up to plus 20 like we have now, it's going to be a bit smaller. It's going to be like plus, um, plus one or zero. I think zero would probably be in a different, different category, but it'll, it'll be like plus one or plus two just to plus 10. Um, and then, of course, you can go higher. I'm assuming you can go higher than plus 10. Um, to the victors go the spoil, spoils. It's important to note that the basic structure of dungeon rewards is not changing significantly. So what you would have earned for completing a Mythic Zero will be earnable in the Heroic Difficulty Dungeon instead. It's a basic rundown of what you can expect. Okay. Um, let's do this. So we have Initial Upgrade Level, Item Level, Season 3, Dungeon Awards, Season 3, End of Run. Dungeon Awards, Season 3, Great Vault. Item level, Season 4. Dungeon Awards, Season 4, End of Run. Season 4, Great Vault. Okay, this formatting is a little weird, but... Yeah. So... It looks like... So currently, Heroic Dungeons are dropping 428 gear. In the new patch, Heroic Dungeons will be dropping 476. And 476 is what Mythic Zero is dropping now in the current season. So Heroic Dungeons are going to be dropping equivalent to what Mythic Zero drops now. And then, yep, we can just see how that sort of progresses here. So eventually, at the end of Season 4, Mythic Plus 10 and up is going to be dropping item level 522. 522. That's crazy. It's a big increase. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so crests and flightstone rewards are changing to match the same difficulty with only some minor adjustments. Flightstone earnings for any given Mythic Plus will match the equally challenging Mythic Plus from previous seasons. This means that a Mythic Plus 2 in Season 4 will give the same number of flightstones as a Mythic Plus 12 in Season 3 currently does. The rewards will continue to match difficulty even if what we're calling those difficulties changes. Bonus Flightstone awards for increasing any party member's Mythic Plus score remains unchanged. Uh, Welpling Crests are no longer available from Mythic Plus Dungeons as those difficulties no longer exist. Players can continue to collect Welpling Crests for, for many outdoor sources. Okay, that's a good call. Players will earn 10 Drake Crests on successful completion of a Mythic Zero Dungeon, as there is no timer to beat. 
Worm Crests will be available in plus 2 to plus 5 dungeons in the same quantities as existing Mythic Plus dungeons. Um, so currently you get Worm Crest up to, what is it, 16 or 15? So now we'll be getting them up to plus 5. Aspect Crests will be available in any Mythic Plus and any Mythic difficulty from 6 and up. Also in the same quantities as existing Mythic Plus dungeons. Yep. So it's all just, it's scaling relative to the way that they're squishing it. Very cool. Uh, we believe these changes provide new opportunities for players to experience Mythic and Mythic Plus dungeons while providing additional challenges for endgame players in the future. We look forward to your feedback and we'll see you in the dungeons when Dragonflight Season 4 goes live. <clears throat> cool. So it'll be, it'll be very cool to see the groups that were previously pushing 30s, right? 31s, 32s. Maybe by the end of this season, um, they're not going to be going as high because the way that it's scaling, it's going to scale out of control quicker. Because right now you're getting to those really, really challenging, almost impossible mechanics around the plus 30 range, right? If the scaling is getting squished, those are going to start happening a lot earlier. You're going to start getting those crazy impossible mechanics at like maybe i don't know i don't know maybe a plus 16 who knows um that'll be interesting to see okay so there was more news right let's take a look at this Dragonflight Season 4 Mythic Plus Dungeon Rotation. Eight Dragonflight Dungeons. Man, these ads are out of control. I need to turn ad block back on. But if you're watching my videos, don't turn ad block on. Turn ad block off. Okay. So, eight Dragonflight Dungeons. In today's dungeon difficulty blog, Blizzard seemed to reveal the Season 4 Mythic Plus Dungeon Rotation, the eight Dragonflight Dungeons. So, we have Algathar Academy, Azure Vault. Brackenhide Hollow, Halls of Infusion, Neltheris, Naku Defensive, Ruby Life Pools, and Alderman. Everyone's worst nightmare, Alderman. Oh no. Oh no. Um, in addition to the 2024 roadmap, Blizzard also alluded to this. Uh, Dragonflight uh, will revisit Dragonflight dungeons and raids along with outdoor content featuring updates updated rewards, and a few new twists. So I think this is the the thing to really focus on. If you guys are like kind of bummed about those dungeons coming back, just keep in mind that it seems like they're open to changing things. If there's something that's just like really, really annoying and obnoxious in dungeons um, and it's causing a lot of problems, I think they'll they'll take a look at it. Um, and they have a lot of source material and data to work from because they, we've already had those dungeons in the Mythic Plus rotation. Um, so I think it's it's pretty it's a pretty shared sentiment that Alderman is the worst dungeon. It's it's the worst one. It's the most annoying one. And they have the data on their end. They can see that the keys timed for Alderman are a lot lower than all the other ones. So. I think they'll, they'll look into them and see what they can do. Um, and yeah, this is just going over some of the other changes that, uh, that we already looked at. Good eye on Wowhead here. It also seemed to confirm that bolstering and incorporeal, incorporeal sorry, are making a return. Two affixes that the community has identified as unfun. So this kind of goes against what I just said. That... Um, despite everyone kind of complaining about Incorp and bolstering, these two are staying. But I do think that maybe we're just reading into that a bit too much. Um, there could be more news coming about, um, you know, affix changes and dungeon tuning. And uh, we don't know, like, maybe there's going to be a seasonal affix. Um, who knows, right? Who knows? But let's talk about these dungeons real quick. I think Algathar is a community favorite. I think everyone can agree that that one is just awesome to play. Everyone loves Algathar. Um, really looking forward to going back into there. 
it was fun specifically for havoc um in season one but i think it's going to be even crazier now because let's let's just look at like the the tree boss right that's kind of everyone's favorite the tree boss for havoc um yeah it's gonna be crazy think of think of our tier set which we're keeping and how that's just going to rip through all of those lashers it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun and our rage fire is gonna freaking pop off dude it's gonna be crazy um azure vault this dungeon is fun but it's only fun when like your group is successfully doing the skips because otherwise it's a very very long dungeon and i think it's a little cheesy in a way and like kind of kind of weird that like there's certain skips that need to be done in order to time the key like you have to start doing like the the things where you run around the circle and drop down i hope they fix them or if they haven't fixed them yet i, I don't know i'm not sure if they looked at them yet but i think they they need to take another look at azure vault and make it a bit more um streamlined and sort of have a narrow path to go down um because otherwise it's just like kind of an, an annoying thing to do especially in pugs where not everyone's on the same page you don't know where you're skipping are you skipping through the frog section are you you know going around the ring and dropping down it's weird um brackenhide hollow again people love hate love this one they also hate this one um, I personally love it because it's nonstop action, but there is a lot of deadly mechanical stuff that happens in this dungeon. Um, so it's like you're on the edge of your seat the whole time. Um, and there was some weird tuning things in this dungeon where you're supposed to have choices and paths. You can go left or you can go right, but nobody ever went left because it was just tuned like oddly. Um, so hopefully they fix this. Halls of Infusion, everyone hates this. Again, this is a, another dungeon that they really need to look at. This, along with Alderman, was everyone's like least favorite. It's long. The, like the first room of trash is annoying. Um, yeah, it, it's it's just super punishing. The bosses suck. <laughs> this is oh god, I'm not looking forward to going back here. But I do hope that they take a look at it and fix some things. Now Theris was mostly fun. But again, this is an annoying, um, an annoying dungeon because you could only really time it if everyone was following the same strat. Um, yeah, Neltheris, super annoying if your group didn't pull off the chain strat. Um, it's kind of dumb that it was only timeable via the chain strat. If you screwed up the chains, you were done. Um, yeah, respawn points in this dungeon were really annoying. So. Yeah, again, one of the dungeons they, they do need to take a look at. Not good offensive. Again, ah, see, a lot of these dungeons have issues. So I, I understand why people are kind of feeling disappointed that we're going back to this pool of dungeons, but I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out hope that um, they will fix some of, the, some of the pain points here. But yeah, not good offensive it was annoying because, first of all, you had to fly everywhere. Um, trash was hell. <laughs> Bosses were hell. Um, you had to do like the weird skip where you flew up towards the last boss and went onto that little ledge. Um, so we'll see. Ruby Life Pools, though, has shaped up to be a pretty good one. Um, Ruby Life Pools has a strange history where on Alpha and Beta, uh, I think even like early early start of the expansion it was super easy it was the easiest one everyone was hoping to get ruby life pools because you could just blast through it and then once we got into the expansion it became pretty hard i don't know what was up with this but like the bosses were hard all the trash was hard it was one of the hardest and then people complained about it and eventually blizzard fixed it to be pretty good it's in a pretty it was in a pretty good spot where we left it the last boss gave a lot of people problems, but I think we're at a point now where we've kind of figured out how to deal with it. Um, it wasn't until pretty far into the season that people understood how to actually um, bait the things that were spawning from the the, the breath, uh, from the dragon, and 
uh, the the waves and whatnot. So I think with practice, it'll be pretty good. And then Alderman is just everyone's worst nightmare. Everyone hates this dungeon. It has like the lowest timed keys of all of these. It's just horrible. It's just horrible. Um, so I guess we'll see. Um, so some people are asking, hey, where's the mega dungeon? That's not listed here. I wouldn't be certain that it's not included here because what this post right here is, is just um, Wowhead sort of extrapolating on what Blizzard said in their post about the dungeon changes. Nowhere in Blizzard's blue post did they actually give a list of the dungeons for season four. They've just said Dragonflight Dungeons. So Wowhead is assuming that it's just the base eight, but it could also mean that the Mega Dungeon is included. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, these are the changes that we're getting for Dragonflight Season 4. I'm sure there's more news to come. I'm sure we'll be taking a look at affixes and um, potentially maybe a seasonal affix. I think that could be, could be pretty cool. I would like to see that. Um, but overall, I think all these changes are very exciting. And I think this is, this is going to be a great change for the system. I think it's going to breathe a, a lot of fresh air and life into Mythic Plus, And I'm excited to, to dive into this.